down. Hey, good morning, Mark. How are you, man? Well, how are you? Well, we're here in Laguna. Uh, we had the uh, soccer convention, and I figured I'd come by and uh, check on uh, your situation as to what you're working on now. I see you've got some serious chemicals. Are you sure you're uh, not doing anything dangerous here? Uh, <laughs> paint the paint. <laughs> I never heard that term before. The first stage, you get a white piece. Right. And then, uh, then you come back and you paint it. And in this particular instance, I'm kind of working with these really sort of uh, pastel-y colors and, and a little bit of an iridescent technique to get the texture to kind of pop a little more. Some of these I come back and I'll do some uh, glazing with oil over the top of. Some of them I leave them just really sort of frosted and white and light colored. Yeah. So what's the first step? First step would be to make paint. And then from there, uh, the, you know, to make the paint is... Uh, Why don't you just buy paint? The, you make the paint? Yeah, there, I make paint because I'm looking to explore uh, different ways paint cracks. I want to kind of use the chemistry of, of paint to speak to sort of a universal enjoyment of both uh, materials and just how nature has a way of telling a story all on its own. Once I get the piece, uh, I get my homemade modified crackle paint, which I refer to as carbonate, um, going, like carbonate paint. Then it dries, and, and oftentimes I'll, I'll put some kind of a sealant on it or you know, just a barrier coat, and then I work with, uh, I'll just make an oil glaze and, and rub that down on top of it or spray it or whatever I decide to do for the particular piece. And, and what that does is it brings out the cracks, and if I have the barrier coat laid down right, it won't stain the uh, the white parts of the crack, it, it, the oil paint. I want it to collect in the cracks themselves, not on the not on the cells, but on the interstitial space. Um, I did this one for a commission project for for uh, it's going to be put in Las Vegas. I had to do this. This is the second, the first of two that I did. I had a problem with this one, a technical problem. I love the painting, but unfortunately. Uh, along the way, my technique got a little jacked up and uh, it started to delaminate. Paint started to delaminate, which is a big problem when you start making your own paint because the more it cracks, the less adhesive property it has to the substrate you're working on. Uh, but that's a side note. So what goes on here to make this piece is you have black paint, which is the first coat on the canvas. And then I work in, and then I make this paint here, and in this instance I dyed it, I, I colored it tan. It's this warm gray here. Now that particular recipe is such that you're gonna get extreme shrinking in these pieces, and they're gonna be they're gonna have a real clean edge. Okay, so in this particular piece, uh, some of these lines were artificially scored into the surface and others cure naturally and all of these pieces in my mind there's a nature nurture kind of a, a dynamic at work in that I'm making this product I'm putting it down I'm teasing it in certain ways and then nature takes over and finishes the job going back to this painting black tan Okay, those things happen. Then, then I make another type of paint, which is thinner, and that's this white, and that comes in, and I trawl that white then over the black and the tan. And when that cracks, you'll get some white leftovers here, and you'll get this interstitial space that was previously black will now be white. And so there's three coats of paint on this one. Three different recipes. Well, the black is just the black gesso, but the rest of it is paint that I make. And, and wow, beautiful place out here. It's really nice. Hiking over here. 
That's like Guna Hills, right? Hills. This is this an avocado tree? You got your own avocado? We got avocados. Yeah. Oh, that's a huge avocado tree. Yeah. What about this? This is amazing. Yeah. Uh, well, this is another body of work which is uh, a combination of collage and uh, paint. And uh, I sort of fluctuate back and forth between working with layers of paint and layers of collage. This particular piece made mostly of uh, vintage National Geographic maps and sewing patterns. And I love the sewing patterns because when you wet them and lay them down, there's a translucency and then they have this beautiful warm, uh, warm gray that they go and so they're just lovely to work with and I like the dispersion of the graphics. This particular piece, uh, sewing patterns, National Geographic map, and really the intention of making an object that evoked a quilt. I love the, you know, like the uh, quilting technique that comes from the South, like the G's band quilts, phenomenal influence for me. That's what that's all about. So, yeah, John's been a good year. I mean, I'm boxing the stuff up. I mean, you know, it's going either to presentations or it's going to my rep groups or it's going to uh, collectors. So that's a good thing. Um, if you walk around on this side, on this wall I have pieces which are either done or need to be dressed, but for the most part this is work that is pretty current, a lot of these I just did in the last couple of weeks, and uh, I'm liking what's going on here. Look, as I move over here again now, this is getting back to the collage technique, and the collage technique to me is about using a grid and breaking that grid down until it becomes this sort of piece that's more in the world. And to that end, so I'll start with, the, this grid is all based on the size of a National Geographic map. And then I move into different types of objects. There's old envelopes, there's uh, airmail things, there's uh, chopsticks, there's clear piano roll paper. I'll take these various things that are, uh, these, these things I can source that are leaving culture as a practical thing, like the National Geographic maps, we just don't need them anymore. They're beautiful, useless. Clear piano rolls, same thing. Things that are leaving the zeitgeist is an important part of my collage work. I want to bring those things into sort of a excavation site. And, uh, and those excavation sites, I think of like how they're gridded off and they're digging and they're finding these things. That is an inspiration for taking these things from our history and layering them and collaging with them. And in fact, this work over here, the, the work of making my own paint was originally, the reason I did it was because I wanted to actually add the mud on top of the excavation site, right? And so as I started working with them together, I realized I wanted to separate the two paths and have two bodies of work. But sometimes I do come back and put my homemade paint over the top of my collage, so that's a whole body of work as well. So going forward, um, I, have, I have a gallery locally that I've worked with, but I'm looking to expand into some other galleries. You know, I've been a painter for 15 years, and. Uh, during that entire time, I've been lucky enough to sell some paintings, but I, so much of my work has been driven by commissions that it's taken me a while to really come, become comfortable with my own body of work. And I feel like I'm now achieving that point, and I'm really for the first time shopping to have relationships with galleries. So I'm excited for the year coming up. I'd love to have some galleries on the East Coast and uh, maybe in the Midwest and wherever.